Hey guys and welcome back to another episode. I'm Pontus from Canar Goddess and today we're going to talk about a topic that I get asked about a lot and that is gear for pike fishing. So in this video I'm going to walk you through the gear I'm using and more specifically rods, reels, line, leader and some accessories that you might need if you're getting started with pike fishing. I'm going to show you both the gear that I'm using currently as well as some cheaper options depending on your budget and how serious you are about your fishing so to say. But uh, let's start with rods. So I've been using many different rods over the years and nowadays I actually bring two different pike rods that covers pretty much all different sizes and types of lures that I use. And those two rods are first of all the Gator Small Bait Explorer, a very nice good value for money rod, 710 up to 110 grams. And this one is a great, in Scandinavia we call it the downsize rod, in the rest of Europe it would be considered a kind of big bait or regular sized bait rod. But with this I can fish everything from flat nose shad jerk baits and pretty much everything up to 110 grams. So this is a very very good all-round pike rod. I like the fact that it's a two-piece like this so you can store it very easily in the car. Some people mean that you get more sensitivity if you go with a one-piece rod but I don't think there's that much of a difference nowadays. Maybe it was back in the days but this one is very very good. Great sensitivity, you hook the fish really good, it's very fun to fight the fish with, it bends down all the way, pretty fast action so with this one I can fish all types of lures. And the other rod I'm using is the Big Brother, the Gator Big Bait Explorer, 8.5 up to 180 grams. And with this one I'm using lures like the Hooligan Roach or when you're targeting big pike because then you want this extra backbone, you want to fight the fish fast and yeah. With these two rods I can fish all the lures in my tackle box. I very seldomly bring lures up to 180 grams, that's uh, really big, but it works great for the big lures in my tackle box. One more comment about the rods before we move on is that the rod length, like I said, 7 foot 10 on this one, 8 foot 5 on the big weight. They're quite long for being pike rods. Some people prefer shorter rods down to something like 6 foot, especially if you're fishing a lot with jerk baits. You can twitch easily like this, but my style of fishing, you know, even when fishing with jerk baits like the guppy or catchy or all those other nice jerk baits, I mostly fish with a reel. You can do good with a long rod as well. Just cast out and twitch with a reel like this if you fish with the gliders and, and jerk baits. That's a matter of taste and opinion, but uh, that's how I do it. You will gain a few extra meters of casting distance when using a longer rod, so for me that's uh, totally worth it. So somewhere around 8 foot is just perfect. And again, all, all this stuff that we're talking about, they're not brand specific. I haven't tried every rod in the world, so I have no idea. There are probably better rods than this. They're probably cheaper and all this stuff, but this is the stuff that I use and I've found to be a good choice for me. And these two reels that I have on those rods are quite expensive, quite high end. And we're gonna start talking about these and then we're gonna move on to these guys that I was using before. On the small bait rod, I'm on this mega bass reel, Japanese crazy stuff. And even though this one is really expensive, it's like 500 euro reel. So it's a lot of money, but if you're serious about fishing and have the money, it's totally worth it. It's so smooth, casts really good, and like I said, Japanese top quality. Smoothest reel that I've ever fished in my life, period. So fishing this combo is really fun, even catching small pike. And if we move over to this one, on the big bait rod, is the Concept A3 from 13 Fishing. I've been using this one for this whole season and it's really really nice reel. This one is also quite expensive, really high end. This one is like 350 euro. So if you're getting started with fishing, this one might not be your first choice. But again, if you're serious about pike fishing, this one is uh, highly recommended. This one is a beast, can handle everything. So that's pretty much the rod and reels that I'm using. If we're gonna talk about a little bit more fairly priced reels, uh, I've been using these two a lot over the years. The first one being the Gunky BCR HD 400. Another great, uh, you know, classic style bait casting reel. Great value for money, quite cheap. Uh, the thing I like about this one is that you have a really low gear ratio. I think like 4.5 to 1 or something like that. So when fishing in cold water, this one is really nice. You get this super slow retrieve, full contact with the lure. So yeah, this one is a really nice reel. That one that you probably have seen before is the Instinct Reel from BFT. Kind of same price as the BCR, you will get them for around 200 euro. And uh, yeah, this, this is a great option if you're getting started with the pike fishing. There's not much more to say about that. I'm not the most technical guy. I'm not that much into ball bearings and brake strength and, and all this different stuff. 
uh, but these these wheels are good they do the job so they, they work for me line wise I actually use the same line on all my pike rods both the big bait rod as well as this uh, smaller one and the line I'm using is 0.36 millimeter strike wire extreme I'm not that much into lines I don't know much about how, how many braids etc etc I have no idea if there are better ones on the market but I've been using this one for a long time it works I've never had any problems with this uh, line so it's a it's a good choice uh, the only reason for maybe going down in the diameter uh, is if you fish a lot in deep water if you want to get down deep to the bottom fast then you might want to go down to something like uh, 0.30 or 0.28 or something like that but it's good to have this extra strength when you have lots of stuff in water that you get stuck in if you get a backlash from casting you have this, that extra margin you know when using a thicker line so 0.36 usually gets the job done you can go down to 0.30 something like that let's talk about leaders i get a lot of questions about what leaders we're using for pike fishing and as you've seen in our videos we're mostly using fluorocarbon this is 0.9 millimeter and i don't think it should go thinner than this but there's not much need of going heavier than this and i know i know people are gonna have different opinions about this i know people who have gotten their fluorocarbon leaders munched off from pike it has never happened to me i talked to truman about this he has never had any pike biting off um, his 0.9 millimeter fluorocarbon so i would say that it works but comes with a small risk the most important thing is that you keep your eyes on the leader if you start to get too much uh, like flares and and damages then it's good to retie or or put on another piece of fluorocarbon uh, i'm using a staylock snap small swivel up here connected to the braid and uh, yeah it does the trick i'm sure wire leaders and titanium leaders works as well actually that's on the to-do list we plan to make a fluorocarbon versus wire leader challenge let us know in the comments if you would like to see that uh, but it, it's, it's on the to-do list we should do that because in clear waters it feels like this one might sometimes make a difference we don't know if that's true but it feels like that at least uh, i think we're almost done uh, there are a few tools that should always be, be brought when pike fishing the first one being hook out very important tool it will make everything so much easier to just uh, easily be able to unhook the pike uh, without damaging your hands the other tool that you should always bring is a power cutter if you happen to hook a pike like deep down in the throat this one will help a lot to get the hook out instead of trying to squeeze everything out and you might damage the fish so then it's easier to just open up cut off the hook might cost you like one euro for that hook but totally worth it the lives of those pike are way more important so these tools have saved many pike lives and you should always bring them in your tackle box another thing is if you get the hook inside your hand i'm not going to show you like if you get a hook in like this it comes out on the other side the best way to get it out is just to cut off this hook point like this and then you can pull the hook out like this without this baby you will have a hard time to get that uh, hook out of your hand so again this is a very good tool the third one split ring plier so you can easily change hooks and stuff like that this one also has a wire cutter thing uh, and if you make your own leaders and stuff like that this is a, like good multi-tool for fishing can also be used for unhooking of course uh, last thing i think is a pair of polarized sunglasses uh, like these cost us with these ones you will be able to see more followers it's good for your eyes and it just makes fishing so much easier uh, we have done some comparison clips before of like uh, with polarization without polarization we can show you what it looks like here on the camera we have a polarization filter that we can turn on and off and this is the difference and of course like you understand you will be able to see more fish when you're using these glasses you know you can make that last spin stop or you can speed up or you can see how the fish is behaving and react to that so not only nice good for the eyes good protection uh, another good thing uh, with these ones on you will never get the hook in your eye that would be a disaster so don't ever let a hook into your eye so yeah that's pretty much it i mean there are so much more gear for wastelings unhooking mats measuring boards boats float tubes trolling motors clothing everything but but this this is the core of the pike gear that i always bring no matter if i fish from float tube or boat or from the shore or anywhere else so yeah thank you so much for watching please leave me a comment about your thoughts about pike gear i'm not a god when it comes to this everyone has their own opinion so i would really like to hear from you guys what you think what uh, lengths of the rods you prefer what sizes of the reels line diameter lures 
everything. Uh, leave me a comment. Also, if you have any questions, if you're new to pike fishing, drop your questions here. We can all answer together and help uh, learn each other, inspire, and just spread the joy of fishing. Uh, now, me and Mille uh, are gonna keep fishing. We're out filming a pike fishing challenge for you guys. Curly versus paddle tailors. So yeah, we're gonna get back at it. Make sure to subscribe if you like what we do, and I'll see you in the next video.